Welcome back, brethren. We will continue our studies in the book of Matthew from the King James Bible. We will study Matthew chapter 16 in this series. We will discuss about the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees, what people think who Jesus is, and the proper way to become a true follower of Jesus. As introduction, we have learned from Matthew chapter 15, the Jewish religious rulers complained to Jesus because his disciples were eating with an unwashed hands. We've learned that the Lord declared the meaning of the parable of the physical food and the heart. We have seen the great faith of the Gentile Canaanite woman that she was persistent in her faith, even though Jesus called her a dog. Yet she received her request for her daughter. We studied the feeding of 4,000 men besides women and children. The Lord used seven loaves of bread and they gather seven basket full after all the men, the women and children ate. On this lesson of Matthew chapter 16, we will learn that our Lord told his disciples to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then the Lord asked his disciples whom people think who he is. And Peter declared a grand response. Finally, we will know how to follow Jesus according to the gospel way. Our theme, let us follow our Lord Jesus Christ rightly according to his preferred principles. It's the book of Matthew chapter 16. Our first point, the religious Jews asked a sign from heaven, verse 1 to 4. The only sign they will get is the sign of Jonas, according to the Lord. In verse 1, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and Tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. The king is again met by his foes, two sects which were violently opposed to each other, unite their forces against him. They are using all their worldly and wicked wisdom to tempt him. In verse 2, he answered and said unto them, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. In verse 3, and in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O oh, ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but can you not discern the signs of the times? You see, brethren, they could foretell the weather by certain signs. Yet they could not read the plainer and more plentiful warnings of the very near future event. In verse 4, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. That's what the Lord said. And then he left them and departed. Note, these religious Jews were wicked in morals and adulterous in heart in their forsaking the one true God in front of them. 
and then they would they turn around and justify their unbelief in the Son of God by pleading want of proof, demanding more miracles to enable them to come to a right conclusion. Our Lord greeted such persons, for there was nothing to be done with them. Second point, the Lord declared the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees in verse 5 to 12. The disciples could not discern the parable of the leaven. In verse 5, and when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. They have overlooked to bring victuals. In verse 6, then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You'll see that the Disciples are still in the earthly mode. They have not picked up if the Lord is speaking physically or spiritually. In verse 7, And they reason among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. In verse 8, Which when Jesus perceived, He said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because you have brought no bread? In verse 9, do you not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? The disciples' lack of faith made them dull and carnal. You see, want of bread will not have trouble them if they have the faith. They have not learned from their past experience. After years of experience, our Lord has to say to them, Do ye not yet understand, neither remember? The Lord reminded them of their bread experience. In verse 10, the Lord said, Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many baskets ye took up. In verse 11, how is it that you do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? The Lord was asking them straightforwardly, Ye do not understand? They were accustomed to live in the physical world throughout their life without faith. And when spiritual doctrine is mentioned, they resort to their physical and fall apart in the mind. It was sad to see apostles taking our Lord literally and failing to see the obvious parable of his words. In verse 12, then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. They acted like children, but Jesus bore with them very kindly. Note, the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees is sour, hypocritical, carping spirit, and erroneous teaching. The Lord calls it their bread because they live upon it, and they give it to their faithful followers like them. Their bread will not give them eternal life, for it, it is founded upon false hope, like many churchgoers. Today we have false salvation, are living upon the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. <clears throat> Thirdly, the Lord make inquiry of his personality, verse 13 to 20. Jesus asked his disciples who do men say he is. 
In verse 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Our Lord knew well enough what the people thought of him, but he asked his disciples the question that he might instruct them more fully of his true identity. In verse 14, And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Now these were all conjectures, right? Guesses. And far from the mark. This is the problem of many people today that do not believe in him. If they will seek him and know him, they will find the greatest discovery in their lifetime. In verse 15, he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? This is far more searching question. Personal thought of Jesus by the disciples touched a vital point in their life. Their response to his inquiry will discover their true thoughts of him. They have been with him for more than a year, and they have seen many miracles and heard many parables. Listen to our Lord's doctrines that come from divine wisdom. Simon Peter described Jesus wonderfully. In verse 16, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter, as usual, was their spokesman, and he spoke right well. It was simple but a satisfactory confession of faith. For in outspoken words, he uttered his inward belief. In verse 17, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Berjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. See, to understand who Jesus is, is a revelation from the Father. Now, Peter's full assurance of his Lord's nature and mission was no theory in the head. The truth had been written on his heart by the heavenly spirit. In verse 18, the Lord continued and said, And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Peter was a small rock, but the foundation of the Lord church is huge. The, this rock is described in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, that Jesus is the rock. Now, Jesus as the foundation of his church is mentioned in 1 Corinthians 3.11 clearly also. The Catholic religion designated this foundation wrongly and falsifiedly upon Peter. The Lord gave the keys of the kingdom to his disciples. In verse 19, the Lord continued to say, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. You see, for most among the apostles, Peter used those keys that Jesus gave at Pentecost when he led 3,000 into the church. In Jerusalem, when he shut out Ananias and Sapphira, and at the house of Cornelius, 
when he admitted the Gentiles to the church. However, our Lord committed to his church also this power to rule within herself for him. The judgments of his church when rightly administered have his sanction so as to make them valid. Now in verse 20, then charged he, his disciples, that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. And as they were to be silent as to our Lord's highest claims, for fear the people should rush, zeal, set him up as king by force of arms. It was really dangerous to tell such an ill instructed multitude on what they would be sure to misunderstand and misuse. Note, brethren, the power promise is, I will give thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That is the keys of the gospel doctrine. The words of the New Testament are the keys of the kingdom. His ministers are the stewards of his house, into whose hands the keys of his kingdom are committed by Christ. See Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. Fourth point, the Lord revealed his future passion, verse 21 to 23. He declared his suffering and death by Jewish rulers. In verse 21, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. The disciple will be tried and, and the first trial is the death of their master. You know, there is a fit time for painful disclosures, and our Lord is wise in selecting it. In verse 22, Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. At this time, Peter cannot be their leader, for he takes too much upon himself. See, he is acting as the master. He loved this law so well that he could not bear to hear of his being killed, and he would gladly stop him from talking upon his subject so terribly sad. But the Lord humbled him down. In verse 23, But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savourest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Peter is still living in the flesh. This is not the spiritual aim of his death. Note, when the Lord enunciated the phrase, Get thee behind me, Satan, he was referring to two persons. The first person was Peter, who takes too much upon himself. He thinks he got it under control and acted like he is the master. The second person was Satan, who is using Peter as his instrument to hinder his divine purpose. Fifthly, the Lord outlined his principles for his true followers, verse 24 to 28. The Lord revealed his principles how to be his true followers. In verse 24, then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man shall come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. As our Lord to fulfill his destiny must sacrifice himself, so also must 
everyone who would be his follower. Now, to deny ourselves is to stop living for self, but to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. To live for self is to live for a sinful person, and therefore the end is an eternal punishment in hell. To take up our cross is to be willing to be ashamed for the sake of Jesus and his gospel. During the Roman Empire era, the cross is a symbol of criminal humiliation. Everyone that carries a cross is a condemned criminal. Today, if you are living for the Lord Jesus and persuading people to trust his gospel, you can be condemned as lunatic or an insane man. To follow the Lord is to be a fisher of men, as promised to all his followers in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Because Jesus said there, Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Therefore, a true follower of Jesus is a soul winner. That is what following Jesus is. The Lord declared the futility of mere materialistic life. In verse 25, the Lord continued to say, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. They could only save their real selves by the loss of this present life. In other words, they have to stop living for their own selves and live their life for their Lord. When men are living for themselves, naturally they want to accumulate as much material possession as they can gain in their short life. But the Lord said in verse 26, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in, a, in exchange for his soul? If a man loses his real life, that is, his eternal soul, how can he profit even if the world be his? For upon his death, his real life, his eternal soul will be cast into eternal hell. Materialistic and fleshly life is a losing life. For all external things are trifles and temporal in compared to the eternal soul. The soul's value can't be estimated by temporal things. Man will never exchange it for anything if he knows about it. The Lord revealed the future reward of his true followers. In verse 27, the Lord continued to say, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then, he shall reward every man according to his works. There will come a day when Christ from his judgment seat will make it appear who is wise in his way of life. For then shall the reward or the punishment throw its light on the past conduct of man. He will reward those that have laid down their lives for the sake of his cause and his gospel. In verse 28, he said, Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. You know, the phrase coming in his kingdom is a difficult phrase. The Lord did not elaborate it. But in Mark Chapter 9, verse 1, it says, Till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. You see, the power of the kingdom of God is seen when our Lord was resurrected from the dead. This power was followed by the inauguration of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, that when it came, 
3,000 souls were instantly saved at once. Note, in all the pomp of heaven, the king shall distribute the rewards of his last enactment. The righteous shall, through divine grace, have their works taken as evidence of their love to God. The wicked shall with justice have their doom appointed according to their works. See Revelation chapter 20, verse 12 to 15. Let us look at the summary of Matthew chapter 16, brethren. Our first point in verse 1 to 4, the religious Jews asked a sign from heaven. Our second point in Verse 5 to 12, the Lord declared the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Our third point, from verse 13 to 20, the Lord made inquiry of His personality. Our fourth point, in verse 21 to 23, the Lord revealed His future passion. And our last point, in verse 24 to 28, the Lord outlined His principles for he is true followers. Let me encourage you, brethren. Blessed are you if you have been denying yourself, taking up your cross, and following Jesus. May the Lord has blessed you with this series. I'm looking forward to see you on the next lesson. May God be with you.